Hey, good evening YouTube. Um, just getting back from the grocery store. Shut the truck off and the cooling fans are going full blast. Um, really, really fast. <laughs> truck started it back up uh, temperature gauge is showing no no movement on the needle so it's not registering a coolant temperature normally the first thing you want to check when you get that symptom is uh, make sure you have coolant in the reservoir uh, I did that it does have coolant um, the heater is working fine so normally if you don't have any coolant you won't have heat coming out of the vents so that's good so what we've uh, isolated it to is more than likely it is the coolant temperature sensor. Um, normally the temperature gauge should be in the middle right around 210. It's been this week it's kind of been in between 160 and 210. Uh, kind of erratic and fluctuating so I think the uh, coolant temperature sensor has probably died. So follow along and we're going to change that out and we'll do the thermostat while we're at it because once the cooling system's open, we're already there. It'll take a few more minutes and as you can see, truck's got 174,000 miles on it. I don't know if the uh, thermostat's been changed, but we're going to go ahead and do it while we're there. Alright guys, I plugged in the scan tool. What we've got, um, the only code showing is a PO128 or P0128. Um, coolant temperature low uh, that should be expected it hasn't been uh, that way long enough to set the check engine light but the uh, the computer definitely knows something's wrong that's why it keeps turning the fans on first steps to remove your breather box you got a clip here which I've already loosened clamp the throttle body clamp at the air box with those loose There's one more over here. Coolant temperature sensor lives here. Thermostat housing's here. We're gonna lose a little bit of coolant when we um, Take the thermostat housing off. So I put a rag here in case you get coolant splashing around when you uh, open up the cooling system. Better safe than sorry. I'm gonna remove the thermostat housing first so I'll have easier access to the plug on the coolant temperature sensor. for a bigger pair of channel locks. All right, this is gonna make a little bit of a mess. Actually, I think I'm gonna take the thermostat out first, and then I'm, I've got a plastic bag with um, paper towels bunched up in it. I'm gonna use it to block the hole so it doesn't spray as much everywhere. Well, it didn't spray enough to worry about.
there's the old thermostat it was closed we will check on it later Make sure you remove this whole gasket. Make sure there's no remnants in there of it. Or you could have a leak. Now we have access to sensor itself and pull up on this to unlock the tab if somebody's been in here before you could have a broken tab I mean you could have a broken lock Went ahead and got an open end wrench to make this go faster. Let's make a All right, remember, tight is tight. Too tight is broken. So be careful. Clean this off. Getting the uh, coolant level low, I mean below the level of the gasket, it's not really that important because it's an O-ring type of gasket. It's going to seal on there regardless. thermostat housing has metal inserts in each of the bolt holes so you uh, so you don't crush the plastic and cause a leak the gasket should get a little bit of water on it so that it doesn't uh, stick no worries there with all this extra coolant sitting there I'm going to recheck these with a ratchet just to make sure that it feels right and then we uh, button everything up. I'm just double checking the torque. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want it leaking. Luckily with the weather getting a little chillier you can tell if it's leaking you'll see steam coming out from under the hood. Obviously I'm going to have to rinse this off good and let it dry before that's a good troubleshooting tool, but that's on there. We'll put our hose back. Radio your hose actually goes under this hose. Normally I would replace hoses and stuff with 174,000 miles. However, this was a former government vehicle. So they pretty much have unlimited funds. They do these on a schedule. There's nothing wrong with this hose. It's not dry rotted. There was no leaks. So I'm gonna let it, let it stay. The 
way this uh, works, you lift the, the white locking tab up so that you can squeeze this to release the tab on it. So literally just slip it back over. Don't want to bend any of those connections. It's clipped in, push the lock back down so it can't escape. Now refill it with coolant, let it heat and cool a couple of times and call it a day. Put the air box on and call it a day. Okay, the last step is to put our air box back on. Pretty simple. The uh, hoses have got little keepers on them now. Keep them from spinning around. You gotta tuck the left side up under the two uh, coolant hoses. Kind of center this in the middle. Get it down nice and snug. Snug it up against your air filter box. All that looks good. And then you snap your breather hoses that come from your valve covers back in. Tighten the uh, clamps with the flathead screwdriver. See a lot of these that are cockeyed, so try to get it, hold it level while you're tightening the clamps. Now I'm going to start it up, make sure it gets the temperature. I've topped off the coolant. I want to make sure that once the thermostat opens, there's going to be an air pocket in there. So start it up, let it get the temperature, shut it off, let it cool again, and recheck your coolant level, top it off. It should, don't, don't be surprised if you lose a little bit in the first couple of days. Okay, after I restarted the engine, uh, the cooling fans are still going full blast. Uh, so, what I'm going to need to do, I'm going to reset the code and make sure that the uh, fans go off. Okay, we cleared the code and started it. It's been running for about three minutes. And as you can see, the temperature gauge is already starting to move. So, um, you know, we've got a good fix here. Changing the thermostat was probably not necessary but we were there and unknown history on it went ahead and did it anyway the belt changed that because it looked a little sketchy and i've got a um, my wife will tell anybody who is willing to listen to a story about me saying that oh no this all, this uh, water pump belt is fine uh, right before we got in a trip in our suburban and left us stranded on the side of the road in the past so there we go we got it fixed and um I'm just gonna let it run, I'm gonna shut it off, let the air bleed out, and I'm gonna top off the coolant one last time and we'll be good to go.